Hello everybody, I'm Pat McDonough and welcome to Super Citizen. Super Citizen is the only television show in the entire state of Maryland that features a conservative viewpoint on prime time. We thank you for tuning in and we welcome you to the program today. We're going to talk about Vince's Crab House, which has been in the news. You may have heard about it, but if you didn't, it's a fascinating story we want to talk to you about. Vince's Crab House is located in Middle River, Maryland, on the east side of Baltimore County. Uh, it's been in business for 15 years. It's a family-owned business. A young family started this business 15 years ago. They worked hard like everybody else. And unlike when President Obama said, well, you didn't build this, they actually did build this into a successful business where they now have about 90 employees. But the big story about Vince's lately is that they've been under attack and under assault. The past month has been hell, to be quite honest. Um, with the threats from them following us home, riding past our homes, calling my cell phone in the middle of the night, we have two young children um, that we have to keep pretty much hemmed up in the house on beautiful summer days because we fear that somebody could potentially come by and, and say or do whatever they want. Uh, on June the 6th, the assault, so-called protest, started against this small business. It was based on the idea that a post had been made on uh, Vince's son's uh, Facebook that it was considered to be racist. And as a result, it was going to generate a protest. Now at the time, nobody knew how bad or how long this protest was going to be. But it was very violent in the beginning. Now there's a couple things you need to know that are very important. Brenda Myers and Vince Myers, who are the actual owners of this business, never posted anything. They didn't do or say anything. It was their son who had done this. And as a result, actually on June the 6th, a riot broke out. It was very violent, and customers along with Brenda and Vince were assaulted and attacked, and it was out of control. There were, people were subjected, uh, well not people, but Vince and uh, Brenda were subjected to death threats. That's how serious this was. They were followed home uh, and harassed. Customers and staff members were victims of racist remarks constantly including even the black customers were victims of racist remarks. Intimidating attack photos were placed on Facebook, all filled with lies. So things got worse. Now, during the violent period, and the Baltimore County Police failed to react, protect, or defend Vince's business. Brenda Myers and others asked some of the police why they were standing down and doing nothing. Some of the cops were honest, and they were, said they were ordered to stand down and do nothing. Well, there's only one politician in the entire Baltimore County who has the power to issue such an order. That politician is County Executive Johnny Olszewski. Mr. Olszewski is playing a dangerous game by playing politics with the Baltimore County Police Force. That is just like Portland and Seattle where the top politicians, the mayors of those two cities, ordered the police to stand down and do nothing. We know about the results of what is happening in those two places. President Trump said recently that business owners are the real victims of rioting and looting. And there's no question about it. Every time there's a new incident, the people that suffer the most are the business owners. I don't know if there are officers inside the store trying to apprehend people, but there are officers that stood there outside the store as people fled. These are folks trying to, to flee. Look at that, still grabbing it. You know, now, 50 feet away, not even from that, this guy that just grabbed up all those clothes, there's where these officers are. 
They're not arresting anybody at this point. Entered their businesses last night and stole right off their shelves. So I kept checking, and the last time I checked, they were in the store. The manager of Wild Duck Wine and Spirits on Washington Street in downtown watched remotely as looters ransacked his family store Sunday night. You know, by the time we got here, this this here was the way you, the way you see it. My job is gone. My job is gone. Marcus Starks shared a cell phone video of the uptown pantry where he works. The store left in shambles. At first, you feel anger. Then sadness. Abel Alejo owns a market across the street. The market, along with many other businesses, went up in flames. And these are small business owners, local family owned businesses. So, right here in Baltimore County, we had a family owned small business under attack by Black Lives Matter and other protesters. Now, here's the part of the story the media does not tell you Brenda and Vince apologized for their son's post. They also closed down their business for nine days as a form of trying to be fair and settle the matter. But uh, that goodwill gesture, gesture was not good enough. Uh, the so-called protesters wanted a lot more. They wanted to destroy the business and close it down. This is like charging somebody with uh, the death penalty for jaywalking. This is the kind of attitude and criminal justice that Black Lives Matters is always protesting against. They say that black people, in particular black men, are always unfairly punished and overcharged. Well, they are doing the same thing with Vince's Crab House. They're overcharging. They want to, to shut down and destroy the business. The good gestures by the business owners was not good enough. Now the protesters have become occupiers. They have been there for 82 days. That's a long period of time. Now here's the good part of the story. Brenda and Vince Myers and their families are fighters. I believed that they needed help. So I visited Brent, I'm sorry, Brenda, and I told her that Super Citizen would help their fight for justice. I asked the constitutional rights law firm to also join us and help Vince's Crab House. The first action that was taken was to file a lawsuit against Johnny Olszewski, the county executive, for abuse of power. Then we filed a civil rights complaint with the Department of Justice because Brenda and her entire family had been abused of their civil rights as citizens. The Olszewski administration failed to enforce also the permit and zoning laws against the occupiers. So the lawyers filed lawsuits against the so-called protesters. Super Citizen organized a flag-waving rally by citizens supporting Vince's. Now this is interesting. I want you to listen to this. About 100 good citizens from the community showed up to support Vince's Crab House and engage in an orderly protest. At the same time that they were present, there were about 25 of the protesters of Black Lives Matter. Now, both of these groups were about 25 feet apart. Very dangerous situation. I've been to a lot of counter protests in my life, and every time I was at a counter protest where there were two different groups, the police were always present. Well, somehow, with this lively, dangerous situation, the police in Baltimore County were not present. Very scary stuff. Once again, from County Executive Johnny Olszewski telling them not to be there. In fact, things were starting to get a little hot and people could have gotten hurt and the police were called on 911. Guess what? Still did not show up. Is that scary? You know what this is all about? It's not just about Vince's Crab House. Every business, every citizen in Baltimore County, if the executive is going to play games and refuse to respond with our police, they're all in danger. Very serious stuff. Now, here's where it gets interesting. At the same time that the police were not present, guess what? Johnny Olszewski was in Reisterstown marching 
in a Black Lives Matter parade. I'm not kidding. So he didn't send the police to Vince's crab house. He was marching in a Black Lives Matter parade. Talk about a conflict of interest. And there were police everywhere. Pretty clear what Johnny Olszewski is all about. This county is in trouble. We have a leader who wants to play the race card when it comes to running the county and administering lawfully what has to be done to protect people. It's just like Seattle and Portland. The good news is that Brenda and Vince are fighters. The constitutional law people are hard at work trying to do the best we can using the rule of law to win this battle. And Super Citizen is working with the community and the media to tell the real story. And I think we have, and now that story has changed, where people in the community are starting to say enough is enough. This is a family business that has done nothing and these protesters are out of control and out of hand and breaking the law. So we're moving in a good place. Now I want to urge you to support Vince's Crab House any way you can. And I'm Pat McDonough for Super Citizen. Support Super Citizen because these are some of the things we can do to help the business community, to help ordinary citizens. And now that we have legal services, we can do a lot more. Those legal services are going to be used in the near future on another big issue related to Black Lives Matter. And they're going to be used for other issues that are coming up. So now we have media, citizen involvement, and legal services all together. That's more of a reason than ever for you to support Super Citizen. Visit our website at supercitizenusa.com. If you want to help out, please use the PayPal. Become a member for only $20 or give us any kind of contribution you can to help out. I'm Pat McDonough. Thank you for listening. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. Don't be hiding out. Bring Joe Biden out. I propose, and I'm going to digress slightly. I, here we, we're in a situation. I, the president asked me to head up a cancer moonshot. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Welcome to Kingswood Community Center. Actually, that's the one down I used to work. That's a joke. You know where we were anyway. <laughs> I got hairy legs. Hairy legs that turn blonde in the sun. In the sun. Come up my legs. From the morning until the day's done. People are losing faith in what the president says. Think about it. What the words of a president matter significantly. Well, they sure do, and that's why. I got hairy legs. Yeah, that's right. You heard what I said. You heard what I said. Yeah, man. I love it. I got hairy legs that turn that 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 that, that turn uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun. Well, this week we asked the Biden campaign for an interview, and they said the former vice president was not available. We'll keep asking every week. That's a pretty darn good life, Carl. I learned a lot. We let this get out of control. Lived out in Mayfield with my grandpa. We used to play basketball with the corn pop. And he sank every single shot. I just spoke at a at Dartmouth on health care at the medical school. Or not, I guess I wasn't actually on the campus, but the people from the medical school were at the I, I want to be clear. I'm not going nuts. I'm not sure whether it was a medical school or where the hell I spoke, but it was on the campus. I got hairy legs. Have you been tested for some degree of cognitive decline? I've been testing and I'm constantly testing. Have you taken a cognitive no, test? No, I haven't taken a test. Why the hell would I take a test? I propose, and I'm going to digress slightly. I, here we, we're in a situation. I, the president asked me to head up a cancer moonshot. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing. Look me over. 
you like what you see, help out. If not, go for the other person. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Super Citizen Roundtable. I'm Pat McDonough. This is Valerie McDonough, and this is Brenda Myers, our special guest, the owner of Vince's Crab House. So, Brenda, you uh, had spent the day in court out in Towson. So you've had a long, tough day. Yes. And uh, you won your case on this particular issue. Yes, I did. And what was what was the issue? So this was an appeal to the peace order that Ricky Vaughn, or that I had gotten against Ricky Vaughn. So I was uh, granted the peace order. He amended. We went to circuit court today, and I did uh, win the case today. So he is still has the peace order against me. So one of the things, the strategies that you have is to try to defend and protect your business through the rule of law. Yep. So you have used a, a citizen's right to uh, sue people who are doing you harm. Uh, one of them is the county executive, Johnny Olszewski. Now the case there is that you feel, and you have a lot of proof actually, that the county executive used his power to order more or less because he's in charge of the police they're our police right. uh, to stand down and really not protect you and that's been your experience yes it has so how does how do you know this i mean what has happened uh that you can tell the viewers that has occurred already right that uh well it started day one um the protesters were at my front door and my back door um and as they were, as I was being assaulted, them trying to get into my store, mm -hmm. um, those types of behaviors, the officers just stood there. And I didn't understand why, because they were within inches of me. And the officers stood there. Well, I've, I've actually seen videotapes of that. And that, to me, was absolutely horrifying, because the officer is behind an open door. And you see people literally screaming at you, and I believe it was your son. Mm -hmm. And they're, like you said, inches from your nose. Yes. They could have touched you. They could have hurt you. And I guess that one, that video went on for like two minutes. And then finally, we see someone close the door. But where was your safety? What did Baltimore County do to protect you? They did nothing at the time. Um, that the incident that we're speaking of was the night that we were letting our um, employees out. And the protesters were out back. They were clearly um, very loud, um, yelling and screaming. So I had my own personal protection take one of my minor employees out to the vehicle of her aunt who was picking her up. As soon as my security uh, moved away from me, they were right at my back door trying to come in and I kind of had to bury them, barrier them from coming in. Um, at that time, they were in my face and the officers were right there just standing there. Nothing was done. And you had to hire your own personal protection. Yes, I did. And that was very expensive. Yep. After $50,000, um, I pretty much had to, you know, not have them at our uh, crab house any longer. Um, I need to budget my, my bills, you know? So um, I would love to still have security. I think that um, there's times that I wish I did have them there, mm -hmm. but I have to. So Olszewski, in a sense, forced you to spend your own money, $50,000, yes. to do the job that the police are supposed to do to protect yes. you. Now, been fortunate so far, no one has been seriously injured. That doesn't say that tomorrow or the next day that could happen. Right. I don't know what Olszewski's going to do when something like that happens, considering the history of what has already gone on. Right. Now, uh, these people have been there 82 days. Yes. 82 days. And I think there are a lot of folks in the community, including black folks, that are saying enough is enough. And what is the point? I mean, Vince's Crab House, the owners did not do anything. Their, your son posted a sarcastic post on Facebook, uh, but you closed the shop down for nine days. That cost you money. Yes, all uh, five locations we shut down. And you apologized. And most people, I think reasonable people, would say, okay, that was a good gesture. I mean, after all, 
it wasn't a continuous set of racist posts or racist. You've been around for 15 years. You've built up a good business. And you have clientele that are black and white. Yes. And your black clientele are, this, are being hurled, hate speech is being hurled at them, racial epitaphs, but they have still been coming to your shop. The one question that ahead, I want to know was about um, where do these protesters come from? So um, majority of the protesters are not in um, the Middle River area. Quite a few of them um, are from the city or around the city area. They're not customers. There are people out there that have said that they've never spent any money at Vince's Crab House, nor will they ever, which is, you know, their choice. Um, the real um, community that does come and um, patronize us, they are coming back. Um, even our black customers, they've said enough is enough. Um, we're still taking crabs to people out the back door because they don't want to be approached by the uh, so-called peaceful protesters. So more, we're getting busier by the day. I think people are, you know, over what's happened. They feel like, you know, we've apologized. We've done all that we can do. Why are they still out there? And why are they allowed to harass the customers? Brenda, one of the things that I was really concerned about was that in Harford County, Sheriff Gaylor protected your property. But here in Baltimore County, uh, County Executive, um, Johnny Oshusky did basically nothing. Am okay. I correct on that? That is correct. Um, when we reopened after the nine days, our first day opened was a Monday. Mm -hmm. And what was supposed to happen is they were going to protest on Monday and boycott thereafter. So Monday evening, after a very tense day, they were at our front doors. They were allowed to be right at the door. Um, we get in our vehicles. They waited for us to leave. And they followed us out. There was a couple cars that followed us out of the parking lot as the officers stood in the grass area and watched. Um, I immediately, once I noticed that they were following us all, I called 911. And they asked me where I was, where I was headed, and I told them. And they told me that since I was heading to Harford County and I was close to the Harford County line, to call the police there or go straight to the police the closest police station so we we have gotten really so, no security so in other words they were not going to come out and help you no. uh, I mean somebody to me somebody could have pulled in front of your your mm -hmm. truck they could, put, could have ran you off the road mm -hmm. you could have been laying there dead and Baltimore County failed to protect you because of an order that the county executive gave down that Am is I correct. correct? Yes. Now, you have said from the beginning, and I think it's become clear, you're not going to shut down. And that's what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. It's not that, okay, we're protesting, they said something, or somebody in the family said something, and we wanted an apology, and we wanted an understanding to work together. Uh, you tried to do that. Mm -hmm. But they want to destroy your life. They want to destroy your business. They want to keep doing And you're not going anywhere. One of the reasons I came to you and I wanted to help out was you're a fighter. And I, I can tell you I've had calls from some other businesses that wanted us to help out. Mm -hmm. And I said no, because the people who, in, with two of these businesses, the people are not fighters. They're not warriors. They had already caved in. Right. Okay? And we can't take our legal firm and we can't take Super Citizen and try to help somebody if we're halfway through and they say, no, I want to give up. Right. So uh, you are really a classic example across the country. President Trump said the small business owner is the unsung victim of rioting and looting. The police are there and they get injured and God bless them, they're wonderful, we support them 100%, but they're doing their job. You are there just to run a business with your family. Right. All of these business, I saw on television today, Kenosha, Wisconsin is the latest victim. They had a 60 year old woman on there who owns her father's tire company because he passed away. And she just about makes ends meet, but she does. And this poor woman, they wanted to try to burn her down. And she had some, she had weapons, firearms, with her mm -hmm. people to work for her to protect her. Now, people who own businesses, they have to survive. And you're in a tough business. I yeah. mean, the restaurant business is not easy. Everybody knows right. that. 
and you are the victims, you're the unsung. Why do they want to destroy? I mean, these are socialists, these are Marxists, these are thugs, these are criminals, they're out of hand. You know, I hear the term white privilege. Right. Not to get racial, but I think there is lawbreakers privilege right. in this country. And you're definitely seeing it there with the county executive doing not not enforcing the laws. Right. Also with zoning. What about the tents? They have tents yeah, up. Yeah, we haven't talked They're, about that. We haven't even, yeah, scratched the surface of this. Right. I yeah, mean, so we have on your sidewalk, and that's the public sidewalk. Nobody can use that sidewalk. The local citizens of that community for 82 days have to walk on the other side of the street. They cannot use that sidewalk. Now, they're also up into your private property. You've got a lot of trespassing complaints, but they have two big tents up there. Right. Two big tents that they sit under. We call them the Johnny Olszewski tents. Right. Because he's put them up there. You filed zoning complaints, permits, nothing. No, all of my cases have been dismissed. I um, did another uh, zoning complaint, um, which I will check on tomorrow, and we'll see what they do with that because now they have a homemade uh, stage, if you will, oh, yes. along with they a. Have the stage. They have an eight foot ladder out there, which one of the protesters fell off of over the weekend. Now, will you explain that? Because people don't know what your place is. I mean, why is the ladder there? Why is the... So they can't see the customers because I haven't cut the bushes back. So the bushes are almost trees at this point. So because they cannot get to the customer, they're doing whatever they have to do to, to build harass them up. And they also, Correct. they they had, uh, what do you call those things? Those bullhorns? Bull at bullhorns and music. It was so loud. Yes, it was to, to intimidate That people in the community, mm -hmm. in a nurse, in a, a senior citizen, mm -hmm. complained about this. That yes. At night they were hearing this and all. So it's, uh, they're still there, but you're still there. Yes, I'm not going nowhere. Once again, I'm Pat McDonough. Thank you for tuning in to Super Citizen. The program is on once a month. It is the only conservative television show in the entire state of Maryland. It's on prime time. We're on at 10 o'clock at various uh, channels, including Vi Verizon and Comcast and others. But uh, we also are on radio, by the way. Super Citizen Radio is on every Saturday evening from 8 until 10 on WCBM 680 AM. That's WCBM 680 AM, Super Citizen Radio, Talk Radio. Uh, I'm the host along with my co-host, Valerie McDonough, my wife, and uh, it's a great show. Been on for a few years now. You'll love it. Once again, support Super Citizen. Go to supercitizenusa.com. Visit the PayPal section. See if you can join and help us out. I'm Pat McDonough. Thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Been down in Mayfield with my grandpa. We used to play basketball with a cool pop. And he sank every single shot. I just spoke at, a, at Dartmouth on health care at the medical school. Or not, I guess I wasn't actually on the campus, but the people from the medical school were at the... I, I want to be clear. I'm not going nuts. I'm not sure whether it was a medical school or where the hell I spoke, but it was on the campus. I got hairy legs. I, the president asked me to head up a cancer moonshot. All men and women are created by the go, you know the you know the thing. Look me over. If you like what you see, help out if not vote for the other person.